This post is struck to me one prolapse guideline and it is part two of the video. We discussed something in the part one. Now in this is part two. Okay, in the previous uh, video, we studied the post hysterectomy wall prolapse guideline up to objective cure. <clears throat> okay, now what is an acceptable successful result after surgical treatment? That is a very important question. We start with that. Okay, so according to the patient individual circumstances, we have to plan. The type of the operation performed should be tailored to the individual patient circumstances. It's a very important thing. And a comparison of the surgical procedures, open abdominal sacrocolpopaxi versus vaginal sacrocolpopaxi. Uh, we have to discuss this in this guideline. Okay, both abdominal and vaginal sacrospinous fixation are effective. Women should be aware that both abdominal and vaginal sacrospinous fixation are effective treatment for primary post hysterectomy wall prolapse. Okay, low risk of dyspareunia, genuine stress incontinence, okay, is associated with abdominal stress and abdominal sacrocorpopaxin. Okay, low risk of wall prolapse, dyspareunia post-operative stress incontinence when compared with the sacrospinous fixation okay and patient satisfaction no however this is not reflected in significantly lower reoperative rates or higher patient satisfaction this is about abdominal sacrocolpopaxi okay and there is a quick recovery with the sacrospinous fixation it is associated with earlier recovery compared with abdominal sacrocolpopaxi okay so it shouldn't be considered with shortened vaginal sacrospinous fixation may not be appropriate in women with a short vaginal line and should be carefully considered in a woman with a pre-existing dyspareunia okay now laparoscopic and robotic sacrocolpopaxi we have to discuss this Laparoscopic sacrospinous fixation is as effective as abdominal sacrocolpopaxi in selected women with primary force destructive wall prolapse and laparoscopic sacrocolpopaxi can include the mesh extension can be combined with other vaginal procedure. Robotic sacrospinous fixation is of limited value. This is there is limited evidence on the effectiveness of robotic sacrocolpopaxi. Uh, therefore, it should be performed in the conducts of research or prospective audit following local governance procedure. Okay, high uterosacral ligament suspension. We have to discuss this. High uterosacral ligament suspension should only be offered as a first line management in the woman with post hysterectomy wall prolapse within the conducts of research or prospective audit following local governance procedure. Ureteric injury risk is there. Clinicians should be aware that the risk of the ureteric injury, especially in the laparoscopic approach, is there. Now, under what circumstances would transvaginal mesh kits grafts be considered? The limited evidence on transvaginal mesh kits does not support their use as a first-line treatment of post-hysterectomy wall prolapse. Mesh-related complications should be understood. If transvaginal mesh is considered, women should be fully informed of the Permanent nature of the mesh and potential mesh complications, some of which are serious and have long-term effect that can be difficult to treat, according to the new 2015 guideline. If transvaginal mesh is considered, women should be fully informed of the permanent nature of the mesh and potential mesh complication, some of which are serious and long-term effect that are difficult to treat, according to the new guideline. And it should be done by the trained urogynecologist. Transvaginal mesh should only be performed by an appropriately trained urogynecologist after discussion of the each individual case in MDT meeting, that is according to 2015 guideline. 
National surgical databases that is very important. The results of all surgical procedure involving the mesh should be prospectively audited and submitted to the National Surgical Database, Precious Society of Urogynecology, and Mesh Complication reported to the Medicine and Healthcare Product Regulatory Agency, which is MAHRA. It is according to 2015. And one should call corpoclesis be used. In old frail women, there should be a choice of corpoclesis. Colboclesis is a safe and effective procedure that can be considered for the frail woman and or women who do not wish to retain sexual function. Is there an indication for concomitant surgery for occult stress urinary incontinence? Okay, but colpo suspension for stress urine incontinence. Colpo suspension performed at the time of sacrocolpopexy is an effective measure to reduce post operative symptomatic stress urine incontinence in previously continent women. Is there any indication for concomitant surgery for post uh, uh, after a word? Colpo suspension at the time of sacrocolpopexy uh, does not appear to be effective for the treatment of stress urine incontinence. Now, mid-urethral sling surgery, we have to discuss this thing. Concomitant mid-urethral sling surgery may be considered one vaginal surgical approach or used for the treatment of post hysterectomy more prolapse. Now, what is the optimal treatment of recurrent vault prolapse? The management of the recurrent vault prolapse should be through a specialist MDT with experience and training in this field according to the new 2015 guideline. Now, clinical governance. Clinical governance should be discussed. National databases such as the BSUG uh, surgical databases should be used to document surgical outcome and complications according to the new 2015 guideline. The International Urogynecology Association, International Continent Society, terminology and classification of the complications should be used for the documentation of the graph related complication. All the complications related to the use of the devices at the mesh should be reported to the MAHRA. This is according to 2015. Now, RCUG guideline about post hysterectomy wall prolapse has come to an end now. In the part 3 video of this topic, we will study POPQ classification. I love this and bye till that time. Thank you so much for your patience. Take care.